Good evening and welcome to Glambition with me, Joanne Strauss, a brand new show right here on ETV where every week we'll celebrate all the elements that make us uniquely African and beautiful. In this week's episode, we'll be focusing on women achieving in fields traditionally dominated by men, music, business and film. First up, we have philanthropist, businesswoman and mother, Carol Bauer. What an introduction. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to see you. Always a pleasure to awesome. see you. Beautiful. Thanks so much for joining us on the set of Glambition because to me, you absolutely personify what it means to be glamorous and ambitious. Now stop talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. Thank Carol, you. Tell me exactly what, what different industries are you involved in at the moment because I know you've got quite a big portfolio. Which project lies closest to your heart? You know, people have known, I've grown up on screen and it's all looked very glamorous. Yes. But not many people know that I come from a four-roomed house in Soweto. That's where I was born. And I've always felt that uh, it was a very dehumanizing experience, uh, you know, for, for African people to grow up in that kind of environment. And I've always wanted to create homes that I felt, you know, could really restore our dignity. So I think the property business is the one that really resonates with me. It's the one that speaks to what I would like to see South Africa become. As an African woman, you are able to do everything. We know that. You've got a gorgeous son. You're married and all these various businesses, how do you manage to balance everything? I prioritize, you know, I often say to people and my staff will be the first to tell you that I am a mother and a wife before anything else. And my business has to work with that. My business has to respect who I am. So Dante is my number one priority. And he's I'm 11 years old. He's 11 <laughs> years old. I fetch him from school when I can mm -hmm. and uh, you know, spend as much time as I possibly can with him. And I think also the fact that he's at a school that allows us to live wherever we want to be. He was at Redham House in Bondi in, in Sydney. And now he's back here in South Africa, still at the same school. I think that helps. It's also finding ways that, you know, to live your life that accommodate everything that you want to be and everything that you want to achieve. Tell me about your mentorship projects as well, because I know that that's something close to your heart is helping and developing other young women in the industry. I was very lucky when I started out in this industry. I had multiple angels that, you know, were placed upon my path that held my hand when I needed that, gave me that hug when I needed it, gave me that kick when I deserved it. And, and I've often felt that we need to recognize that you know, young girls today have a multiplicity of challenges that they're dealing with. And the last thing that we should expect of them is to make the right choices without being helped along. Now, as a woman dressing for business, there are various elements that you have to take into consideration. There's the clothing that you wear, there's the way you do your makeup, and also what I've found important is the fragrance that you wear that symbolizes I've arrived. So we traveled to Paris to speak to the guys at the biggest, biggest fragrance house in the world, Givardin, to find out exactly what scent makes a woman powerful. Fragrance. Does uh, influence the perception of power by deepens and everybody everybody has a special connection between fragrance uh, and everybody chooses fragrance for a specific reason. For some people it's really wanted to um, be reassured and to feel comfortable and they want something uh, that they really uh, know that reminds them good moments. For some people it's different, they want to be uh, more extravert uh, and for them choosing a fragrance is really like an olfactive statement affirming their personality and they really want to be smelt when they enter in a place and also they want to everybody knows that they were in this place when they are left. The smell of power by good question. Difficult to answer because I think there's no one answer to this question. It's mainly about being sure of oneself. It means that it's a fragrance that you have already worn and it's a fragrance that reminds you moment where you were powerful. Most of the time people are wearing fragrance because they like the name, the brand, the advertising. Sometimes they know exactly what they what in the fragrance, as I as I know the ingredient, but it's not uh, most of the case. So it's very difficult to uh, to connect the power, the amount, the amount of power of a fragrance to a specific ingredient. 
I think it's very difficult or very arrogant to, so to judge something on the, the fragrance they are wearing. Because it's like in fashion, you know, it's very difficult to define good taste and bad taste. And uh, if people are happy with the fragrance they are wearing, I think it's good for them and it's, the objective uh, has been reached. Uh, so for some people, this fragrance could be a bit too overwhelming, it could be too obstructive, but uh, if they're happy with this fragrance, I think it's okay. And I think it's very, very uh, difficult to judge. I think the most important thing is that fragrance brings happiness. If they're happy, it's enough. Keep jasmine at night. Happy smells like a bubble of champagne. Poor like, smell like um, tar. I'm absolutely honored to have on set with me on Glambition, Mam Sibongile Kumalo, the African queen of jazz. Mam Sibongile, do you agree with that? Does power smell like tar? I don't know about power smelling like tar, <laughs> but I know, I, I, you know, one has been aware of this whole notion of power dressing and everything. All I know is that women dress to, to feel good. Yes. Women, we, women dress as an artistic expression of, of themselves. Women dress creatively. You know, you, I sometimes spend time, I, I love to people watch, right? So I'll sit in a coffee shop or a, or a restaurant, and you can tell the women that feel confident about themselves, the women that, that, that probably have, have powerful support systems at home, in their workplaces, you see even in the way that they walk. How would you describe your career and the influence that men, and your father in particular, have had on your path up to thus far? You know, this might be completely incorrect, but what I have observed is that a lot of, a lot of my friends, a lot of the women I know who, who are considered to be powerful or considered to be strong have had very strong male influences in their lives. They've had very, um, uh, they've, they've learned, they've wa children learn by watching most, right? So you, you, you see this man who loves your mother. You see this man who encourages you to do certain things. Um, it's, it's a small thing, but when I was 17 years old, my dad made me change a flat tire on his car. And I was like, this man is cruel. And, and it was a lesson I took with me all the way, that you can't do what you said to yourself. The support again that the men offer, I, I also, I'm pretty much daddy's little girl, but my mom's almost the silent power yes, in the household yes. that keeps everything the together. The more pervasive power, actually. Yes. The, more, the, more, the, more, the more subliminal power that, 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 that gives you the confidence to be the woman that you want to be because you also have that reference point of, of this woman that doesn't have to flaunt her power. It's just there and it's, it's, it's there and it's strong and it's, it, it's not in your face, but it's there. I think since when, when you want power, then you try and show uh, characteristics that you think represent power. Mm -hmm. But once you have it, it's yes. innate. Yes, you, you, it's never, you never really have to um, you know, try and make it felt wherever you go. But what's interesting for me in listening to you is that we, we really, as, as women, as young men, uh, as whatever you are growing up, you, you are the sum total of the environment in which you grow up. So, you know, a strong father and mother whose presence is there, trying to keep families together, I suppose, is the message that I'm trying to, to drive at. You know, try and, and have both role models available at all times as the children grow up. My mom always says, for her, she's a strong African woman. She says the man is the head of the household, but the woman is the neck. And the neck can turn the head in any direction yeah, she no, pleases. That's true. <laughs> it can turn it in any direction. The neck, if the neck is weak, then the head is likely to collapse, yes. you know. Mam Sivongile, Carol, thank you so much for joining us on Glambition. Coming up after the break, we celebrate more African women doing their best to strive for success. Now with me in studio, I have Johanna McCorkey, a very successful businesswoman who's also recently won an international business award. Where did your strong entrepreneurial sense actually come from? 
it was nurtured at a very young age. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, our parents used to make us as siblings go out into the streets after school and uh, to be able to sell, to be able to raise money for the family. So I guess at a young age, um, it was inculcated in us that one needs to be uh, industrious. Johanna, both you and your sister Bessie participated in beauty pageants and are now very successful businesswomen. Do you think that that pageant history sort of helped you to present yourself well in the workplace? I think it certainly did. I think you learn a lot of, about deportment, how to carry oneself, how to articulate yes. uh, yourself, which a lot of people I don't think uh, know that beauty pageants have that kind of uh, value add to a, a young girl. I've always said you need as a woman, especially if you've got a bit of eye candy, to <laughs> learn your bot pack as best as anybody in the room. You need to be able to do your own research to investigate the issues that are going to be dealt with so that when you speak, because it takes a while for your voice to be heard, um, then they realize, you know, she always, when she opens her mouth, she has something valuable to add or an angle that we've never thought of. Maybe we should listen to her. And before you know it, you know, your exterior pales in, the, in front of their eyes and uh, they look more and more into your brain power. How much of a role do you think that dressing vibrantly plays in the business atmosphere? I think that it is critical for women to understand that you do not have to change the femininity that we as women have because I think that it is a positive and we should be able to use it to our own advantage. So yes indeed, you know, I'll put a bit of colour because uh, I'm feeling bright today and it's the colour of the season and I thought to myself why go in a black and white suit? And I do find that a lot of powerful women as well do their black dark suit and are in pens because they think that if they look any different, they're not going to be taken seriously. But I sit here in front of you today and tell you that I'm a true testament that if you women, you embrace your femininity, but you show up when your brain is required and it comes in at the right level, then everything else certainly does not matter and you can still celebrate and enjoy your womanhood. We actually went into the streets of Johannesburg to show you how to put together a fantastic outfit, your hair, your makeup, to make sure that you can take over in the workplace. I just want to find the beauty and power. Beauty for me, is, as cliched as it sounds, is a person understanding themselves, loving themselves and being beautiful inside and that will automatically manifest itself on the outside. Beauty is something that you naturally exude. It's something that you cannot acquire. It's just part of the package. It's just part of who you are. And power, I think it's something that makes you significantly felt. First thing that comes to mind is confidence. When a person knows who they are, they're confident in themselves, they in turn become powerful. In a work environment, understand what kind of business sector you're in and understand the fashion DNA that should be part of you and part of who you are and, and, and run with it. You can never go wrong with, with a tailored suit. Your black and your navies, they, they, they always complement one another. You don't necessarily have to always wear black on black or gray on gray. Bring in a bit of color in, in, in terms of the gray apparel that you have. And in terms of the black for a lady, you can always go red. I find red is warm and it also gravitates attention in a way. Again, making one um, significantly felt so keeping it dark and bringing in a dash of red. With the first look what I liked about it what made her more approachable was the fact that the hair was more sleek and chic and it was straight down and it was more like let your hair down loose type of look with a nude lip but the second look is more bold and courageous. I think smoky eye for starters I mean that in itself makes a person look mysterious but at the same time confident and beautiful. The bold colors that I use with the eyeshadow that's what makes makes a person more powerful or seem more powerful. And in terms of the lips, when we went to the second look, when we went from a nude look to a red lip, I mean, red has always been a, a color of power, a color of boldness, a color of confidence.
Well, as you can see, in business, it is very important to look the part, but also to be very competent. How would you go about putting together the perfect business look? I think that uh, the night before, you need to be able to find the suit that makes you feel best outside. So when you look yourself, you look at yourself in the mirror, you think, wow, I'm dressed for success. Because I do think that people as well, if you are put together well, it obviously um, reflects, I guess, on well, how structured your mind is. That's what I believe and I see that it works a lot. Johanna, thank you so much for sharing those valuable lessons and secrets to success. After the break, we speak to Terry Petto, internationally acclaimed actress and all-round African beauty. Joining me in studio now, we have internationally acclaimed actress Terry Petto. Terry, you've had a phenomenal journey of success. It's a typical Cinderella story. Uh, ten years ago, today, I was in Soweto uh, doing community theatre, and I never thought in a million years that my life was going to change that much. How would you describe the, the essence of what makes an African woman beautiful? I think uh, what makes a woman, any woman beautiful is, uh, you know, understanding yourself, you know, taking pride in who you are. And as an African woman, my background, my country, my culture, uh, the diversity of our people, you know, those things put together can make anyone beautiful. But for me, I also thank my mom as well, because <laughs> she is, um, you know, a strong, powerful woman and she's beautiful from the inside. And she's always taught me, like, if you are beautiful from the inside, the outside is easy because you can always put makeup on. In terms of beauty, in terms of evolving as a woman, you mentioned it before, but growing up essentially in a shack, mm. do you think that that impacted the way that you view success and your hunger for success? No, of course, because you don't expect certain things to happen to you. You don't, um, you don't have a lot of role models. You don't have anyone you know, that can say to you, this is possible. Uh, you think that uh, getting a job at, at you know, department store that's you know that's your life or um, you can't do better than that and uh, thank God I've always been very ambitious I've always um, loved beautiful things and I've always made sure that there's no magazine that uh, will get thrown out if you know before I, before I read it and from that I learned a lot and I realized that there is a world out there that is bigger than what I have today and uh, that kept me really you know going for a very long time and to realize that anything is possible. And if you have nothing, you've got nothing to lose. So for me, I just went out there and I didn't want to, um, you know, think that, okay, because this is my background, I can't go that far. I just went all out, went for it, and it happened. Very profound what you're saying there. If you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. No, very true. And that is something that does inspire a drive for success. You know, once you taste, you know, success, once you've you know, you got your first paycheck. Uh, you just know that I can't, I know what it feels like to have this. I can't go back. Well, speaking of coming from humble beginnings, we traveled to Paris where we met Sasha Muller, a South African who's actually now taking over the world with her luxury handbag range. You know, France is always known for its materials, the classic fit of things, being this absolute place of beauty. I come here often when I look for inspiration. You can fall in love with anyone in Paris, but especially yourself. When I was 10 years old, I came up with the idea I wanted a fashion label. I come from Mitchell's Plain, so it was a bit of a far-fetched idea. Even, you know, my, I showed it to my mom on a piece of paper and she said, my child sounds fantastic, but I don't think we can afford this. My mom sent me to a Model C school. I kept dreaming about it and I realized there were three factors. Having a good vocal vocabulary and being able to speak well, present yourself well, having great teeth and perfect deportment, uh, or knowing how to carry yourself. The thing my mom always taught me, it doesn't matter because we're poor, doesn't make you less than anyone else. So my mom saved up some money, sent me to deportment school, and I practiced my language on a tape recorder with British television. It just makes it easier for people to understand me. And it doesn't matter which accent I had previously. Do you think being a beautiful woman has helped you in terms of the business world? Sure, you walk into a door and people might have preconceptions, but it's easy enough to dismiss it. What it does it makes people want to speak to you. And using that as an opportunity, it's what you do afterwards that counts. If it's my beauty that's gonna make you spend five minutes with me or listen to my story, then let it be that. I, I did a bit of an e-pray love. 
I landed up in Bali on a holiday. I fell madly in love with somebody. I decided I was going to give it all up and move out there. I gave up part of myself, which is something that shouldn't happen, I believe. Decided I still wanted to be Miss Glamorous. So I designed a handbag. I went on a trip to San Francisco. I was outside Bergdorf Goodman's and a woman stopped me and said, I've never seen a handbag like that in my life. I'll give you so much. And I went on to a hairdresser, told the stylist a story. I said, you won't believe what happened. And lifted it up and showed it to everyone in the salon. And they said, wow, we'll buy that. Three weeks later, she gets the bags and she gives me a phone call. And she says, I've got the handbags. They're absolutely gorgeous. One major problem, they're sold. There starts Maisha, completely by accident. You know, one of the things where things started to change for me, I felt very alone at first. Truth is, it's still a man's world to a large degree. And for a woman to succeed, she's really had to prove her worth. But let's look at the positive side. Someone's making it a little bit harder because they think you're really that good. <laughs>